Hello, everyone that's on the call a little early. Uh, we are just going to give everyone a few moments, probably start around 2.02 .02, uh, Eastern Standard Time, and we'll get the webinar going. So just uh, bear with us a couple more minutes. Hello everyone, it is now 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we are going to give people just two more minutes uh, to attend uh, and then we will get going. So just two more minutes. All right, all right, all right, let's get started. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's presentation, 203K for Dummies. I'm very excited about this presentation today. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, feel free to email them to us at webinars at .com. We will get to all of your questions after the call. So without further delay, let's get started. Your presenter today is yours truly. My name is Steve Rosetta. I'm the Renovation Lending Manager here at Remen Wholesale. In today's agenda, let's talk about what we're gonna discuss on today's webinar. This is really all about 203K. So if you're new to the 203K, we are going to first start off with the basics. What exactly is a 203K? Then we'll dive into the benefits for you, the mortgage broker, 
your real estate agents, and also contractors. Then we'll talk about the file process flow. So how a, a file is originated to how it is closed and post-closing. Then we'll also discuss how you determine the loan amount, whether it be a purchase or a refinance. Then we'll go into some of the specifics, such as max LTV, credit score requirements. And then lastly, we'll talk about how you get started on your very first 203k loan. So let's start off with the basics. Take a look at this graphic at the top half of the screen. We either have a purchase or a refinance where we have the purchase price or the payoff, and we're combining that with the home improvements or the repairs that the borrower wants or needs. We're combining the two and we're doing one single mortgage with one single payment with one single closing. Traditionally, you may do two closings with two closing costs and two sets of fees. We are only doing one closing where we're baking in the renovation costs into the mortgage. So again, that's one single payment. The cool thing about the 203K is that unlike your typical loan, where the loan amount is based off your as-is value, we're basing the 203K off the as-completed appraised value, meaning subject to all the work being done. So we can finance in a lot more when we talk about as-completed value. With the 203K, the renovation work begins after closing. So after you've processed and closed the loan and you've moved on to the next deal, that's when the renovation work starts. The contractor has six months to complete that work. And it should be good news to you to hear that Remin handles all the post-closing contractor draws from the setup renovation escrow account. So you don't have to get involved in the actual renovation work. Also good news, these loans are similar to your traditional 203B. They have the same FHA income, asset, and credit underwriting standards as a 203B. And you're going to see your familiar non-reno FHA conditions. So you already know 75% of the conditions that you'll see on a 203K. What Remen's job is to do is to train you on the new renovation conditions and get you accustomed to those. So let's talk about the advantages of a 203k. Well, I mentioned before, there's just one single monthly payment. So your renovations and your first mortgage are all rolled into one payment. We can also finance in up to six months mortgage payments during renovations. So if you're doing work where the home will be uninhabitable during the period of renovations, we don't want your borrower to pay rent somewhere else and pay a mortgage at the same time. We'll allow them to roll in up to six months mortgage payments. Another great advantage of the 203K is that the borrower doesn't have to tie up their cash. So their savings, they don't have to go out and use that on their new kitchen. Instead, they can finance in that dollar amount to do their new kitchen and they can use their cash somewhere else on another investment. Another great advantage, unlike your cash out loans or your home equity loans that are based off of current value, a 203K is based off of ARV or after improved value, after repaired value, subject to value, they're all the same thing. So again, we can finance in more, raise the loan amount more based on after improved value, whereas you can't really do that on a cash out or home equity if you don't have equity in the home. You're kind of limited. With a 203K, you're getting competitive FHA rates. You're not getting rates that would be typical of a hard money loan, personal loan, or credit card, or a construction loan. You're getting competitive FHA rates. You're also getting a longer term 
you can finance in these repairs over 30 years. So if you do a new home addition and it's $200,000, you roll that into your mortgage, well, guess what? You're paying off that new home addition, that $200,000 over 30 years at a low fixed rate. Unlike your hard money, personal loan, or credit cards that have higher interest rates at shorter terms. So let's talk about the status of renovations across the nation at, at this given time. So here's a cool statistic. Spending on home renovations reached a record in 2018. We as Americans spent $336.9 billion on remodeling projects. And that's only up from a year previous, okay? And this has been a trend for the last several years. And really, uh, the statistics out there don't show that it's going away. Uh, so what we really want to do is we want to make you guys the experts on renovations so that you can capitalize on this growing market. And another reason why this market is growing is simply because of shows on HGTV. It's kind of silly to say, but the reality is that people will watch this stuff for hours. Uh, Fixer Upper, Flip or Flop. Um, it's, it's really inspiring to see these people do work to homes and, and really renovate them and remodel them. Um, so we have a saying now, improve versus move. So maybe you have a, a family and it's increasing in size um, and there's you know, low inventory out there, which is another problem. You can't really find the right home uh, with the right size. So why not just build an additional unit or additional room or additional floor? Improve versus move. Renovate the current home you're living in, make it a dream home versus spending time, money, and effort finding another home that, that suits your needs. Um, and again, just to, just to feed into this, the average age of U.S. homes is 40 years old or greater. Um, so that really just means that there's a lot of renovations and remodeling, updating um, to make homes uh, you know, livable for the new generation. Uh, the millennials. Uh, we don't want our, our grandparents or our parents' homes. We want new state-of-the-art stuff. Um, so we want smart homes. Um, so there, there's a lot of things that play into the rise of renovations and HGTV um, and the average age of homes are just a couple of them. So now let's talk about benefits for all. All right, everybody benefits from a 203k loan. First time home buyers, borrowers adding value or building equity right from the gate, okay? Maybe they put $50,000 worth of renovations into a home and they get $100,000 back in after improved value. Well, guess what? They just built $50,000 worth of instant equity. And borrowers looking for a particular neighborhood that can't find a home they like, well, maybe they have to look at a less than perfect home. And maybe they have to envision that home with a new kitchen, a new bathroom, new siding. So they can make an imperfect home in the right neighborhood their dream home. Real estate agents, same for you guys. We can move those aging listings. So 90 days sitting there, six months sitting there, these homes people aren't looking at because you know they're in disrepair, they need work done, they need modernization. Um, but you as a real estate agent or you as a mortgage broker helping a real estate agent can show the potential of that home with a 203K. So maybe you can show that home with plans for a new kitchen, plans for new siding, plans for a new deck. Why not? Now your homes are moving faster because people see the future of that home versus what it currently is. And now here's a new one. We have contractors involved on these types of loans. So you can really get a good referral base from contractors, okay? Contractors are incentivized to do 203Ks because now their, their clients have more access 
to funds. A contractor might write up 10 bids in a week and only one of those clients has the funds to do the job. Well, because we're using after improved value, your borrowers now have additional access to funds that they normally wouldn't have access to. So your contractors are happy because now they're winning and getting more jobs because their clients have more access to funds. And contractors typically don't know if they're getting paid if they're just doing business with a homeowner and uh, sometimes homeowners bail, right? But with a 203K, that money is set aside for them in a special renovation escrow account. And they know without a doubt that as long as they perform their job and do their work, they will get paid. And if they do a good job or if you do a good job, the referrals will go both ways. Sometimes the contractor might be approached by someone who needs funds. That contractor might refer that borrower to you to help out. So establish relationships with the contractors in your area. And lastly, mortgage brokers. This is a great opportunity to differentiate yourself, right? So typically I see that there's not a leader in renovations in, in, in a lot of markets, right? So the potential is still there for you to be a standout in your area. And typically what I see is that once someone's a standout, they tend to get all those deals in the area. I want you to be one of those people. Um, so today is a great start, um, but we will, we will help you out along the way to make sure that you become the renovation master in your area uh, and you get all those deals. Uh, another, another great reason for a 203K is that it will help you fix appraisal issues. So how many times have you had a deal fall apart when the appraisal comes back and the appraiser says, you know what, there's five items needed to be fixed for this property to meet minimum property standards and the deal just falls through or it doesn't work, right? With this type of loan, you can fix that problem. You can say, don't worry about it, guys. We have a 203K, we can finance in all that work, and that work can be done after closing. We'll close the loan, and it can be done after closing. Other great benefits, because we're adding in additional repairs, we're getting increased loan amounts, and you're getting increased commissions. And if you're doing a purchase, you might have the potential for a second refi loan, okay? And again, you will have increased referrals all around from borrowers, real estate agents, and contractors if you do a job well done. All right, so let's talk a little bit about getting the deal. The first thing I want you to do, whether it be now or after the call, is go on to Zillow, Trulia, Redfin, and search keywords such as TLC, fixer upper, as is, needs work, and see what agents are listing those homes. Then I want you to reach out to those agents and offer the 203K as a solution or an aid to help get that listing moving, right? You're gonna work with that realtor so they can market the dream home, not the home as it currently is. Also want you to reach out to local contractors and let them know that you can get their clients funding. And lastly, I want you to reach out to any of your past purchasers. Maybe they just increased their family size. Maybe because it's summer, they want to you know, do some pool repairs. You can do that with a 203K. And again, it goes back to improving versus moving. And on a refi, the good news is that that borrower can come to the table with zero money down on a refi. All right, so now let's talk about the process from beginning to end. So first we're gonna determine, you know, is it a purchase or a refi? And with that, you'll either get a purchase contract or a payoff. Again, the seller on a purchase is only getting the purchase price, they don't really care about what work is being done. Then we'll choose the renovation program. 
We have the 203K Limited, the 203K Standard. We also here at Remen Wholesale have the Fannie Mae Home Style as well as the VA Renovation Loan. The next thing we want to do is send the borrower out to find a contractor. That contractor will produce a contractor's bid broken down in labor and materials, and they will need to provide us such items as license, insurance, and a profile with past references. So keep in mind this contractor should be reputable. We'll get into this a little bit later, but if the repairs or the total renovation costs are greater than $35,000, or there's any structural jobs being done in the scope of work, maybe it's foundation work or removing a load-bearing wall, uh, we require a third party known as a HUD consultant. And again, we'll get into that in a little bit. Next, we'll help you determine the loan amount. And we have an Excel sheet called the Maximum Mortgage Worksheet, which myself, your AE, or your AE assistant uh, can all help you with. Um, basically, we plug in some numbers, the repair amounts, some fees, uh, purchase price, payoff, and out spits your loan amount. Um, but we can help you with that. Next, we'll structure the 3.2, run to you, get that approved eligible, and then we'll move to submitting the file. And this is really cool because this is very uncommon and it's basically unheard of. We will produce a 24-hour initial underwrite on any renovation loan that we do here at Remen Wholesale. And that's just not renovation loans. We do that on our regular loans um, as well as renovation loans. So any loan here, any time of year, we're doing a 24-hour initial underwrite. Once we get that approval back, let's move to ordering the appraisal. And again, we're ordering the after improved value appraisal. So what we'll do is we'll provide the AMC, the contractor's bid. That appraiser will go out and they will determine what the after improved value will be based on the work being completed. It's really a guess, um, but they do their, their best job given comps of what the, what the property will be um, looking like after all the work has been completed. Next, we will move to clearing conditions and going to closing. Again, you'll have your non-reno FHA conditions that you're already comfortable with, and then we'll have our new reno conditions that we'll get you accustomed to. Then the loan closes, you get paid, real estate agent gets paid, you move on to the next deal. Then comes post-closing, where our renovation concierge desk place calls out to the contractor, the borrower, and the HUD consultant, get them all on the same page about how the draw process will work. They'll say, okay, now you can start work, the loan is closed, here's how you request a draw from us, and we will take care of the rest. So now let's talk about the roles. So there's three new roles uh, that you guys uh, will need to learn. So the first is easy, it's the contractor. Again, they need to be licensed, insured, and experienced. We don't want, you know, Joe the handyman who does unpermitted work uh, and does one job, you know, every two years. That's not the contractor that we need on these types of deals. This is a serious um, loan program uh, with a lot of paperwork. Uh, and we need reputable contractors. Um, after the call, you will receive a PDF uh, that I have put together called the Contractor's Guide. It will have a checklist of everything that the contractor needs to provide, license insurance, W-9, profile, and all the miscellaneous disclosures. What you can do is simply send this PDF off to the contractor, and it will be uh, self-explanatory uh, on what they need to do. Then next we have a 203K HUD consultant. Okay, they are again an independent third party whose real job is just to look after the project and make sure it's being done right for the right prices and it, it goes smoothly. They'll work with the borrower and the contractor and again, the lender as well. Uh, and what, the, what they will do first is do a project feasibility analysis, meaning they will 
analyze the numbers on the contractor's bid and make sure that those numbers are accurate, they're including all the necessary work to meet minimum property standards, and that it's not a lowball uh, low ball bid. Uh, just in case something happens, we have to fire the contractor, use another contractor, we need to make sure there's enough money on there so that someone else in the area will take that job. Once post-closing hits, that HUD consultant will facilitate the draw inspections. So closing happens, the contractor goes out and does, let's call it 20% of the work. Contractor wants to get paid. They will call up the HUD consultant. And that HUD consultant will go out and inspect the contractor's work. He will either say it's satisfactory or not. If it's satisfactory, only then can that contractor get paid for the work they did. And then it rinses and repeats until all the work is done and all the inspections uh, have been done. Each time that con consultant goes out, they get paid. And lastly, it's important to know that a HUD consultant is really only needed when total renovation costs exceed 35,000 or if there's any structural work, such as foundation work or you know, anything involving moving a load-bearing wall, for example. Um, if it's not $35,000 worth of work and there's nothing structural, we don't need a HUD consultant. We would call that a 203K limited. When we involve a HUD consultant, it's called a 203K standard. And last but not least, 203khudconsultants.com is a great resource to find a HUD consultant in the area. All you have to do is plug in the zip code for the subject property address and up pops a list of consultants in the area. So now let's move on to our renovation draw department. Again, these guys come into play after the loan is closed. They'll work with the contractor and consultant to facilitate the post-closing draws. And here's an important thing to know. Both programs, whether it be the 203K Limited or Standard, have two different payment terms. So the 203K Limited, 50% upfront labor and materials to the contractor at closing. The other 50% gets paid to the contractor after final completion. 203K Standard could be a lot of work being done. Could be $200,000 worth of work being done. We don't want to give them 50% upfront. We'll only give them 50% materials only up front after closing. The rest of the money is paid out every time the consultant does a draw inspection, and that's up to five draws. Moving on, let's talk about the math behind a renovation deal. So let's start with a purchase. It's important to remember that the down payment and the LTV is based off of the purchase price plus total renovation costs, okay? So in this example, we have $100,000 purchase price plus $50,000 in total renovation costs for a total of $150,000 in total costs. Times 96.5 max LTV, we get a loan amount of 144,750. And from that, we can get the down payment of 5250. Again, it's important to remember the down payment is not based off of just the purchase price, but it's based off the purchase price plus total renovation costs. Moving on to a 203K refinance. Now we're using our LTV off of the after improved value. Okay, so this is a little different. In this example, we have a payoff of $100,000, total renovation costs of $50,000, total closing costs and prepaids of $10,000 for total costs of 160 k The appraiser comes back with an after improved value of $200,000. We multiply that times our max LTV of 97.75, and the max loan amount that we can dish out here is 195 500. Well, because that 195 500 is greater than our $160,000 of total cost, that means our borrower doesn't have to come to the table with any money. We can do a zero down closing. 
There is one caveat though, however, with a 203K, we will need a second as-is appraisal, and we can discuss that with your AE or myself after the call, if you have any more questions on that. So now let's talk about what goes into total renovation costs. So keep in mind, total renovation costs, when we use that term, it's not just the number on the contractor's bill. We also include other fees. So first and foremost, we have a financeable contingency fee. So that's really just in case money, just in case the contractor overruns just in case the contractor peels back a wall and finds some other work that needs to be done and is necessary. Um, so we always finance in a contingency. It's usually either 10% or 15%. If you know in advance that the utilities are off on the property, meaning the water and the electric are off on the property, just, just one of them is off, um, we do an automatic 15% contingency. In this example, we're going to stick with a 10% contingency. So 10% of $200,000 on the bid is 20 grand. We have 20 grand for just in case money. Now, if that money is not used at the end of all the renovation work being done, the remaining balance goes towards a principal reduction. We can also finance in permit fees, architect plans, Say you are doing a new addition or you are expanding the square footage, uh, you might need architect plans. We can finance in the cost of those. Uh, and again, if we're doing a 203K standard, you're going to need a HUD consultant. And that HUD consultant does charge a fee, and they do charge that fee prior to closing, just in case the loan never closes, they still want to get paid, right? So in this example, they'll charge $1,000, but keep in mind, we can finance in that $1,000 and after closing, cut the borrower back a check for that $1,000 if they want. So we can finance that in. We can also finance in the HUD consultant's inspection fees. So again, every time the contractor needs their work inspected and needs a draw, HUD consultant goes out and gets a inspection fee. And lastly, we touched on this, mortgage payments. So again, if the home is uninhabitable, we can roll in up to six months mortgage payments. So if the HUD consultant comes back and says, you know what, uh, the home is going to be uninhabitable for three months, then the borrowers can live in the home. Well, we can only finance in up to three months mortgage payments. So we can only go up to what the HUD consultant tells us uh, in terms of number of months uh, of the home being uninhabitable. Um, and all this put together equals our total renovation costs. So in this example, we have a $200,000 bid that turns into $235,000 worth of total renovation costs. And again, this is all financeable. So moving on, let's talk about the differences between the 203K Limited and the 203K Standard. 203K Limited is for smaller, lower budget jobs. The total renovation costs must come in under $35,000, okay? And there must not be any structural work. If there's structural work and the project is $15,000, well, guess what? Now it needs to be a 203K standard. We need to evolve a HUD consult. On the 203K Limited, there's no minimum repair requirement. So you can do a 203K limited if the borrower needs to do $2,000 worth of work or $1,000. Um, it might not make all that much sense, but you know we don't have a minimum on a 203K limited. Um, now, both programs require that the work be done in six months. Um, on a 203K standard, there is a minimum project size of $5,000, but there is no maximum repair amount. So if, if the borrower needs to put in $300,000 worth of work, that's fine. We just need to make sure at the end of the day that the loan amount isn't exceeding the county loan limit. 
and we can go up to high balance loan limits. So now let's talk about the 203K Limited and Standard versus the other competitor, the Fannie Mae Home Style. Well, the 203K, simply put, is a little bit more flexible on credit and underwriting. We can go down the scores of 550. Of course, there are some overlays. Check with your AE on that. We can do manual underwrites, and we can go up to higher DTIs. The home style, however, is per DU only, so you do need that approve eligible, um, and there's no manual underwriting. The 203K is a little bit more forgiving on appraised value too. So on every 203K, we get an extra 10% on whatever the after improved value is. On the home style, we don't get that extra 10%. So all that means is our 203Ks are more lenient when it comes to appraised value. So if you're really unsure on where this property is gonna appraise at, 203K might be worth can more consideration. On a 203K, just like your normal 203Bs, you have MI for the life alone. On a home style, you don't have MI after 80% LTV. 203Ks are for one to four unit primary residences only, and you only need three and a half percent down, whereas the home style, you need 5% down on a primary. But you can do second homes and investment properties. On a 203K limited or standard, you need two appraisals, but you can do a zero down refi. You can also do a zero down refi in a home style. You would only need one appraisal. And on the 203K limited and standard, there's no maximum dollar amount on the repairs that can be done. So again, you can do up to $300,000 if you want. Home style, there is a calculation where you are limited. So now let's talk about some of the eligible renovations that you can do with a 203K. And there is a more extensive list on our product guideline page on our website. If you look at the yellow bar scrolling across the bottom, go to reminwholesale.com slash product guidelines. Uh, for a more extensive list, but in essence, you can do a majority of work that the borrower wants to do with a 203K. The only things you really can't do are luxury items such as new pool installations, extensive landscaping, you want to put a spa in your home, can't do that with a 203K. Uh, simple, basic stuff, but we can do um, you know, a, a lot of stuff with a 203K as well. So for example, we could do roofing, siding, foundation work, kitchen and bath remodeling. This is really cool. Appliances. So your borrower wants to finance in a new refrigerator or a new stove. Guess what? You can do that with a 203K. Moving over to the right-hand side, we can install a new driveway, new deck, patio, porch, do pretty much anything structural to get the property to code we can do it with a 203K. And again, when you're dealing with 203Ks, you're dealing with borrower wants versus borrower needs. All deals are different. Some are based on needs. You know, the appraisal comes back and the home needs these five items to be completed to get it to code. Um, and then you have other deals where the home is already to code and the borrower just wants a new kitchen. So you have different deals when it comes to 203Ks. Let's talk about some of the spotlighted items that you can do with 203Ks. Uh, first, I'd like to mention again that we can do high balance loan amounts. So if you're in uh, high cost county areas, um, we can finance in a lot more because we can go up to the high balance loan limit. With a 203K, we can do improvements to manufactured housing, which is really cool. Just can't do anything structural. We can also build accessory dwelling units and garages. So you might be in a market where everybody wants a garage, they want a detached garage. You could be the garage person in your market and make a killing. Um, there are tons of niches that you can really hang on to 
or go after with a 203K. Garages are, are one of them. Uh, you can build additional units, maybe add a second floor or second level. Uh, so again, if you're, you're, your past purchaser is now increasing their family size and you know they don't want to move, they want to improve, why not suggest they add an additional room or an additional floor? Um, this can be rolled into a refinance. And again, if the value is there, they don't need to bring anything to closing. Condos, we can do interior work only. It just needs to be approved by the HOA bylaws or we need to get written permission from the HOA. This is really cool, mixed use properties. So if you have mixed use properties where the residential units need work, we can do that with a 203K. Solar energy financing, do you wanna be the solar panel person in your area? Use the 203K. Okay, it's a lot better financing than what the solar panels, solar panel companies are uh, providing. Okay, your borrower wants to put on a new solar panel uh, on a purchase or refi, we can do it. Teardowns, rebuilds, say a, a home was, uh, you know, um, torn down or, or uh, got destroyed during a, a fire or an earthquake or any other natural disaster, uh, we can rebuild that with a 203K. As long as the original foundation is intact and we're building off that original foundation, it won't be considered new construction, which is a really cool thing about the 203K. You can get FHA rates, FHA financing, and not have to deal with all the new construction uh, paperwork and, and rates um, that, are, that are much higher. Um, so you can do teardowns and rebuilds with 203K. We do play hero a lot on incomplete projects. So a lot of homeowners think they can do the work themselves or they have enough funds to do renovations to their own home. And sadly, they fall short um, and the work is incomplete. So they come to Remen Wholesale. We base their new loan amount off of after improved value and we help them complete their, their incomplete home. Um, and we play hero a lot in those circumstances. Uh, and lastly, this is really cool, uh, do-it-yourself repairs. Only if the situation is right, okay? So we don't want someone who's a dentist to try to put on a, uh, a new roof. We don't want that. But we will accept someone who is a roofer by trade, who has license, insurance, uh, who has references, we will accept that person to put on a new roof on their home. So now let's talk about why Remen Wholesale. Well, again, I mentioned this before, 24-hour initial underwrites. This is on any loan, but on renovation loans, this is kind of unheard of. Um, we really do push service as a company and specifically on renovation loans. We do have the number one industry volume in 2018. Uh, we did the most 203Ks as a wholesaler, um, and that's really only expected to continue. Uh, we do have the support from your AEs who have been trained and are knowledgeable in not only the 203K, but the Fannie Mae Homestyle and the VA Reno program. They are very well versed. You have myself, self, I'm an internal resource here for all the AEs. Uh, you have our excellent AE assistants. They are phenomenal. Uh, we have a help desk here that is also phenomenal where you can simply go online and submit a chat, chat question and you will have that chat question answered in a minute or two. Um, and lastly, we do have a really, really good post-closing renovation concierge desk. Um, that's really another name for our, our post-closing rental department. Um, they are really, really dedicated to customer service on the back end and making sure that your contractor and your borrowers are satisfied um, with you know, the, the work being done properly and the draws being paid properly. And lastly, 
We have excellent marketing. We have a platform called Flyer Paradise. If you are not signed up with Remin, go get signed up. You need to be signed up to use Flyer Paradise. If you are signed up, contact your AE or shoot us an email at webinars at remin.com and we will get you set up with Flyer Paradise. Once you enter that platform, you have the capability of customizing flyers, renovation flyers. So let's say you need a 203K flyer, you can put your logo on there, you can put your contact information, and you can send that out to your real estate agent partners. So now that we've talked about all that, let's talk about your first 203K deal. What I wanna say about this, is I don't want you to get bogged down in the details. We need to make this as simple as possible for your first deal. You're going to learn along the way. Don't get, in, get intimidated. Remin, myself, your AE, AE assistant, we will all help you out and handhold you throughout your first deal. And from there, you will gain the confidence to do more of these. But on your first deal, let's not get complicated. Just want you to sell the deal and get the deal to us. We will take it from there. First thing you need to get is a ballpark idea of the work. Okay, so what are they doing? Are they wanting to remodel the kitchen? Do they want to fix you know, the broken steps on the appraisal? What needs to be done? Is there any structural work that needs to be done? So just get a ballpark scope of, uh, of work. Okay, and that may be from a live bid, or it may be just from a borrower's estimate, or it may be from, you know, the cost to cure items on the appraisal. The next thing I want you to get is an estimated dollar amount. Again, this may be the borrower telling you, I think I want to do $20,000 worth of work, or they may already have a bid with an actual dollar amount. Either way, get a number. And lastly, I want you to get an estimated after improved value. So what will the home appraise for after all the work has been completed? And if you need to work with a local agent to help determine that number, do it. Okay, but we do need an estimated after improved value. And lastly, I want you to call either the AE or your AE or myself or your AE assistant to help discuss the rest of the process. And from there again, we will teach you what to do, the right tips and tricks to getting your first reno done in, in, a, in a quick time, okay? Uh, so on your first one, a lot 45 days for your first rental closing, okay? And that's from the time you've got your contractor's bid and paperwork in hand and you've submitted the file, 45 days. Once you get good at these, after your first one, even on your second one, we could do it probably in 30 days, but make sure you allot yourself at least 45 days. Um, if you want even more time, go for 60. All right, so now we've reached the end and I'd, I'd like to thank you all for attending today's webinar. Uh, if you have any question, questions, now is the time to shoot them to us at webinars at webinars.remin.com whether that be just scenario questions, if you need to get set up in Flyer Paradise, if you need a contractor list for previously validated contractors in your area, please email us. If you'd like to set up a one-on-one -on -one training or a team training, I'd be more than happy to do that. Just email us. If you have a live loan, you need submission help, email us. And lastly, if you aren't signed up yet or your dormant account and you need an AE, contact us. We will get in touch with you. And I'll leave you with this. Please, please, please add me on LinkedIn. If you add me on LinkedIn, you will get updated renovation news, updates, and sales tips. I'm always posting things relevant to renovation loans. So with all that being said, again, I'd like to thank you for attending today's webinar. Happy reno hunting, and uh, hopefully we'll talk soon when you have your first 203K. Thank you.